Let's say I've got two magnets, each with a north pole and a south pole. They're going to generate, well, they generate two magnetic fields, but in effect, it is like one magnetic field because those magnetic fields that they each generate end up joining together like this. Now, there's other magnetic field up here that we're not going to look at that right now, okay? I'm going to I'll look at the magnetic field just in between, directly in between those two magnets, the North Pole and the South Pole. Is that the right direction? Yeah, we say that the magnetic field is from north to south outside of magnets, and even though this is in between the magnets, it's still outside, outside these two magnets. So there's a magnetic field. Actually, let's change the color of that. Let's make it a green one. Now, let's have a charged particle. Let's make it a negatively charged particle going this way. Which way is that? The x means into the page. The magnetic field caused by that, uh, that negatively charged particle would be, well, we'd say thumb, fingers go counterclockwise. It would look like this. I got two magnetic fields now, right? I got a green one and I got a blue one. The green one we call an external magnetic field because it was there. It was there before I introduced this moving charge. Okay, this is my external magnetic field. But I've also got a magnetic field that's caused by the moving charge. Those two magnetic fields will interact with each other just as the two magnetic fields from two bar magnets will interact with each other. They're going to produce a force. But what does that force look like? Well, it's kind of tricky here, actually. We have to use a rule called the hand rule for deflection to figure out what this force looks like. And the hand rule for deflection goes like this. You're going to take your left hand, because it's a negative particle. If it was a positive, you'd use your right hand. Your left hand, make your fingers and your thumb perpendicular to each other again. There's that word perpendicular again. Make them perpendicular to each other, but don't bend your fingers this time. Leave them straight. Stick your thumb in the direction of the moving charge, just like you did with the first rule, the wire grasp rule. Thumb in the direction of the moving charge. Fingers go in the direction of the external magnetic field. That's the green one, the one that was caused by something other than the moving charge. Thumb, direction of the particle into the page. Fingers external magnetic field, palm, your palm of your hand will automatically point in the direction of the magnetic force. So this is weird because we've got a magnetic field that's going to the right, we've got a charged particle that's going into the page, but yet we've got a magnetic force that's going toward the top of the page. Thumb, fingers, palm points toward the top of the page. Let's formalize that. The hand rule for deflection used to find the direction of the magnetic force on a charged particle, okay, right, right hand for a positive particle, left hand for a negative particle, moving perpendicularly through an external magnetic field. My thumb will point in the direction of the moving charge. My straightened fingers will point in the direction of the external magnetic field. And my palm will automatically point in the direction of the magnetic force. Let's do a couple examples here, right? Let's say that in the first situation, the first example, we have a magnetic field pointing towards the right-hand side of the page. Um, what's caused that magnetic field? I, I don't really care. Okay, it could be some kind of bar magnet. It could be the Earth's magnetic field. It could be some kind of electromagnet. It doesn't really matter. This is an external magnetic field caused by something. Now, we're also going to have a charged particle. We'll make it a negatively charged particle moving down the page, toward the bottom of the page. What's the direction of the magnetic force? Well, you know you use your hand rule for deflection, right? The wire grasp rule was simply to find the magnetic field surrounding a moving charge. The coil rule involved coils. OK, 
Okay, the handle for deflection is used when you're involved when you have an external magnetic field and a force somewhere in the mix. So this is what we're going to do now, the hand rule for deflection. We're going to say thumb in the direction of the particle, which is down the page. Don't say down. Don't say down. Say down the page or toward the bottom of the page. Why not down? Well, it depends on how your page is oriented, right? Like for me, right now, down is down the page. But if you're looking at the diagram on your page, down the page, toward the bottom of the page, is not down, right? It's that way. Okay, our frame of reference is the page here. So we don't want to say up or down. We want to say up the page or toward the top of the page or toward the bottom of the page. So this magnetic field is towards the right side of the page. The charged particle is moving down the page, thumb down the page, fingers external magnetic field towards the right side of the page. Palm points which way? into the page. And even if your page is horizontal like yours is, I would say thumb, fingers, palm points into the page. Okay, so that's our answer there. Into the page. Or you could represent the direction of the force by an X because it would be into the page. Let's draw another one. We'll make the magnetic field to the right again. What's it caused by? It doesn't matter. It's an external magnetic field. But this time I've got a charged particle going into the page as represented by the X. We'll make it a negative again, an electron or some kind of negative ion. We're going to say thumb in the direction of the particle, which is into the page. Fingers go direction of the external field, which is to the right. Palm points. Palm points which way? Don't say up. Toward the top of the page, or you could say up the page, right? Because if you're, if you're doing it here on my frame of reference, then it, then it is up, right? But on yours, because your page is horizontal, it wouldn't be up, but it would still be toward the top of the page. Does that make sense? Now, in both of these questions, our frame of reference was the page. Sometimes you see a frame of reference where the Earth, you're measuring everything relative to the Earth, north, south, east, west. Okay. We all know which way is north, which way is south, which way is east, which way is west, right? Or at least we thought we did before a few days ago. Whenever you see a question that mentions north, it's going to be the traditional understanding of north, northern Canada, even though technically that's magnetic south, right? We're going to call this south and we're going to call this, what's BC? BC is west, and Nova Scotia is east. So this is our north, south, east, west frame of reference. When you're dealing with north, south, east, west, up and down work, because our frame of reference is the earth. And up is always up. So let's do an example with, with the north, south, east, west frame of reference as opposed to the page. Let's say we've got a charged particle Charged particle, negative, again, let's say going towards the east. Negative particle going east. Let's say we've got a magnetic field that's pointing to the north. Charged particle east, magnetic field to the north. Which way is the force? Well, Right now, you can look outside the window and see the mountains out there. You know that's west, right? What if you're in the cafeteria on diploma exam day, and you kind of get turned around, and you're not sure which way is north or which way is east or west? Make it up. Like, make it up. As long as, as, long as east is 90 degrees to the right of north, it doesn't really matter if that's right. As long as... You, you make east 90 degrees to the right of north. So let's pretend we can't see the mountains outside there. Let's pretend we don't know, actually know which way is north, south, east, west. Okay, let's pretend we're in a, a, a room with brick walls where we can't see anything outside, and we just have to make it up what the direction is. We have our charged particle going towards the east. Okay, if I'm ignoring the mountains out there, then I'm going to say that way is east. I've got my magnetic field going towards the north. 
thumb to the east, fingers to the north, palm points which way? Down. It's okay to say down now, right? Because the answer is toward the earth, but toward the earth is down. There's only one earth frame of reference, so it's okay in that case to say uh, down. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say we've got a positive particle, like an alpha particle, going towards, going towards, we'll make it going towards south, which for us, that way is south, right? The positive particle going south. We've got a magnetic field that's pointing up. It's okay to say up because the earth is our frame of reference. Positive particle, right hand, going to the south. Magnetic field going to the, going up. Palm points which way? To the west, right? To the west. So understand the two frames of references that we can deal with here. One is our page, right, left, toward the top of the page, toward the bottom of the page. One is the earth, north, south, east, west, up, and down. All right, I'd like you to take a look right now at a few questions on worksheet number 11. I say a few, there's really eight. But they should go fairly quickly for us because they're all hand rules. I'm going to caution you about one thing, though, before I set you free on those. This rule that I've just taught you is valid if the charged particle is moving What's the word? Perpendicular, that big word that carries on through next unit, perpendicular to the field. It is not valid if it's parallel or if it's something other than perpendicular or parallel. Here's the good news. If it's perpendicular, use the hand rule. If they're parallel, like this or like this, there is no force. The force is zero, so it's an easy question then. And if there's something else other than perpendicular or parallel, okay, like this, don't worry about it. You're not going to see a question like that. Okay, make sense? Next year, take university physics, you might. It's not all that hard, actually, but um, we just don't have to do that this year, so we don't. So perpendicular, uh, use the hand rule. Uh, parallel, there is no force. Anything else, don't worry about it because you're not going to see it. Okay, let's work on those eight questions. You're going to come across a couple that are parallel, so watch for that. And you won't come across any that are 37 degrees type thing. All right, let's take a look at these questions here, all right? All, we'll do all eight of them. They'll go pretty quick, and then we'll do an equation, then we'll call it a day here. Number one says an electron travels to the right of the page. Left hand, electron, travels to the right of the page through a magnetic field that points into the page. This is an external magnetic field. This is not the field that's caused by the electron. This is some magnetic field that was already there. Okay, we're looking for the direction of the force. So therefore, this is a hand rule for deflection problem. If we were just trying to find the magnetic field caused by the moving charge, that would be a wire grasp rule problem. But we're not. Okay, we're going beyond that, dealing with the external field and the force that's caused by that. So we're going to say thumb in the direction of the particle, which is to the right of the page. Magnetic field points into the page. Palm's going to point which way? Palm's going to point down the page, toward the bottom of the page. Not down, but down the page or toward the bottom of the page. Number two, uh, an electron travels into the page through a magnetic field that points toward the left of the page, which weighs the force. Uh, thumb points into the page. Magnetic field points towards the left of the page. Palm points down the page, toward the bottom of the page, not down, down the page. Three, an alpha particle. This is where I want to draw attention because I'm used to using the left hand for uh, any of the hand rules. Right hand this time because it's alpha particle. Travels toward the top of the page. Magnetic field out of the page. Thumb top of the page. Magnetic field out of the page. Palm points towards the, to the right side of the page. Towards the right side of the page. Four, an alpha particle again, positive, right hand, travels north, which we mean geographic north, right? Okay, unless, like, unless it specifies otherwise, when we say north, we mean what we typically think of as north, geographic north, right? Not this whole backwards thing that we learned about the other day. The electron travels north, 
which we're defining that as north, right, because we can't see out the window. Don't know which way is really north. Through a magnetic field that points geographic north. Oh, wait. How do you do the hand rule when they're both going north? There is no force. Okay, so there's no hand rule to do. There is no force. Uh, wrong one. Number five, are we on? Oh, I skipped. Well, this one's zero. I skipped four. But five will be zero because we've got north and north, right? Okay, so I did skip number four. We'll go back to that. The alpha particle is going geographic north. Magnetic field points towards the west, right, to the left of north. Palm points, Regan palm points, or palm points up, right, up. We don't have to say up the page now. We just say up because our frame of reference is the earth, right, north, south, east, west. Six, alpha particle travels out of the page. Magnetic field points into the page. Well, what do we know about those directions? They're parallel, and if they're parallel, the force is zero again. Even though they're not the same direction, they're still parallel. Seven, electron travels to the east. That's east for us, right? Electron travels east. Magnetic force is north. Okay, so I know my thumb and I know my palm. Which way does my fingers point? Thumb to the east, palm to the north. Fingers point... Which way? Up. You don't need to say up the page because Earth is our frame of reference and up is up. Alpha particle traveling into the page. Magnetic force is towards the right of the page. Right hand because it's alpha. Into the page, towards the right of the page. Magnetic forces, palm is, fingers point. Fingers point up towards the top of the page, right? Fingers point up the page or towards the top of the page. Well, what if we want to find not just the direction of the force, but rather we want to find the magnitude of the force as well? I'm going to give you an equation now that's used to describe the magnitude of that force. It looks like this. F, which stands for magnetic force, in Newtons, what do those two vertical lines represent? Absolute value, which means that when I give you this equation, we can use it to solve for the magnitude of the force. There is a direction, because force is a vector, but we're going to have to find the direction some other way. What other way would we use? The hand rule for deflection, what we just learned, right? We already know how to find the direction. We don't need the equation for that. The magnetic force on a moving charge through an external magnetic field is equal to Q. Q stands for charge in coulombs times V. V stands for, this is a lowercase v, by the way, not a big V. V stands for the speed in meters per second times B, or at least the absolute value of B, which is the magnetic field strength in Tesla. Now, there is one more little thing I'm going to add into this. It's a little upside down T beside the V. What do you think that means? What, sorry? A little upside down T? I didn't hear what you said there. Okay. You mean the right side up T? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about the upside down one. This little upside down T means that V and B, velocity and magnetic field, must be perpendicular in order for this equation to work. You know that the hand rule only works if they're perpendicular to each other. Well, the equation only works if they're perpendicular to each other as well. If V and B are perpendicular, then the hand rule for deflection works. And the equation works.
if v and b are parallel, so in other words, the particle is moving with or against the field, then we would say the equation would not work. The hand rule for deflection would not work. But it's OK, because the force in that case is just equal to 0. If v and b are at some angle other than 0 or 90, then who knows what the force is? There is a way, a pretty simple way, actually, of determining it. But we don't have to know it in physics 30, so we won't do it. 95% of the questions that you will get this year will be this, where they're perpendicular. Maybe the odd time they'll be parallel. You won't get a question where they're not parallel or perpendicular. Example number one says a proton is moving at a speed of 5 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. Circle that because proton positive. If I have to do a hand rule, it's a right hand rule. I always do that with positive particles because the tendency is to use the left hand for negative particles. Particles going into the page, magnetic field is towards the right of the page. Those are perpendicular. Okay, that's good. I can use the hand rule. I can use the equation. What's the value? What's the force, the magnetic force? Well, the strength of the force, the magnitude of the force is QVB, which is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 times V, which is 5 times 10 to the 5, times B, 2 times 10 to the negative 2, which, when we do that math, it works out to be 1.60 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons. But magnetic force is a vector. We require direction. Let's do that now. Thumb, right thumb, because it's proton, is going, to the, is going into the page. Magnetic field is towards the right side of the page. Thumb in, fingers right side, palm points down the page. Good. Down the page, toward the bottom of the page. Don't say down. Say down the page or toward the bottom of the page. Let's do one more, and then we'll call it a day here. This one says a 5 times 10 to the negative 25 kilogram particle with this charge, it's positive. It's positive. 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. It's traveling out of the page. Magnetic field is pointing to the right. What's the speed? The particle must be traveling near the Earth's surface in order to not be deflected. Wait a second, not be deflected. How fast does it need to move to not be deflected? Doesn't a force deflect something? When does a force not cause deflection? No, because then there would be no force. When does a force not cause deflection? Sorry? Uh, then there wouldn't be a force, right? F is equal to QVB. If V is 0, then there wouldn't be a force, right? No. When does a force not cause deflection? When there's another force to counteract it or cancel it or balance it. This word undeflected or not be deflected is important here. Write that on the board over here with our little thesaurus. Equilibrium, balance forces, F net is equal to zero, suspended, undeflected. They all mean the same thing. Force is balance. If force is balance in this case, which two forces are they the balance? The magnetic force and the gravity force, Fg. We're going to say QVB equals M times G. And we're rearranging this to solve for speed. I get Mg over Q times B. Sub in our numbers here. 5 times 10 to the minus 25 times 9.81, just to use the absolute value of the g as well. q is 1.6 times 10 to 
times 6 times 10 to the negative 5. We do that, and it works out to be 0 0.511. So my magnetic force would have to be up here. My gravitational force would have to be down. They balance each other. If it's moving that speed, faster or slower, that wouldn't be the case. Yep? Six times 10 to the Oh, you know what? That's a good question. Where did I get six times 10 to the minus 5? That's a great question. I meant to mention that to you before we started the question. I left that out of the question. It should have been listed as the magnetic field. Here's your homework. Question, worksheet number 11. I would like you to uh, not complete it, but to do two more questions. I'd like you to do number 9 and number 11. In addition to the first eight questions, if you haven't finished those already.